Yeah, take your Bibles and go with me to John chapter 6. We are in the midst of a sermon series right now that we are calling At the Movies. And we're taking modern movies that you see right now that are out in the theater. And we are looking to see some themes in those movies that we can also translate and see what God's Word has to say about that. And so today, we are speaking on the subject, say it with me, don't be that guy. Have you ever known that guy before? Don't look to your right or your left. Don't be that guy. And in this movie, there's a, 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 a ape. This is the dawn of the planet of the apes. And there's a guy named Koba. Now, the first thing some of you that are my age thought was what? When I said Koba. Come on. Koba, Koba. No, okay. No, never mind. No, you didn't think that. All right. Well, this guy's the bad guy. And the very first word that comes to my mind when I think about Koba is the word pretender. Now, there's a lot of things about this guy in this movie. He was bitter. He was angry. He was mad. He, he, he was, he was uh, eat up with jealousy. He wanted to be the main guy. But the key word that jumps into my mind is the word pretender. As I look into God's word, there is someone that just really jumps out at me. And we find out about that guy in John chapter 6 and verse 70 and verse 71. John 6. 70 and 71. So if you will, look there with me. I want you to see this. It's on the screen if you don't have a copy of God's Word. This is the Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It is in the New Testament. Remember Old Testament, New Testament. Help you find that. Verse 70 says, Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you the twelve? Yet one of you is a what? Is it is that guy. One of you is... The devil. He meant who? Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, was later to betray him. Can we pray one more time? Father in heaven, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'll move in this place today. Father, we look forward to our time of commitment. We look forward to our time of prayer and invitation. Lord, we look forward to what going to do during that time but Lord we pray that you'd open up our minds and open our ears and open our hearts to hear the word of God proclaimed God allow it today to change our hearts because it's powerful we love you and praise you in Jesus name amen why is Judas that guy I mean why is he that guy because if you look back and you begin to think back as Judas as a little baby Think with me for just a moment. I mean, at one time, a mother had a bouncing baby boy. All moms, when they have our little boys, you know, our little boys. I remember when Austin was a, a baby, and I mean, I was just a young whooper sniper. I didn't know anything about being a dad. And I remember when Tammy had Austin, and, and you know, uh, we were in the hospital, and all the family and friends were out in the waiting room, and they all wanted to see him, so I grabbed him. I held him like this, didn't I, Bobby? And I brought him out. No, naked as a jaybird. And I said, here's my boy, you know. And we're all happy when we have a son or a daughter. And here we have a bouncing baby boy. This mom caressed him uh, like all mothers do. She loved on him. She, she patted him. She talked, baby talked to him. But his name was Judas. Now, I want you to think about that with me. Judas, how many people do you know named Judas. I mean, really, how many people, I mean, we know people named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We know people named Paul and Isaac and Adam. But how many people do we know named Judas? I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody named Judas unless he's some demon worshiper or something or head of a cult. I don't know anybody named Judas. And I've heard of a goat named Judas, and I've heard of a rock waller named Judas. But never a little boy. Why? Because Judas was that guy. I mean, why in the world do we not know anybody named Judas? I'll tell you why. Because it was Judas. Here, follow me. It was Judas who betrayed Jesus Christ. You know the story? He betrayed Jesus Christ. Picture this. Jesus was in the garden before his crucifixion. And Judas, the pretender that he was, the hypocrite that he was, that guy that he was, sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 
And as Christ was praying in the garden, he heard the, the muffled sounds of, of voices as they got closer and closer to get. And they came and they got real close to Jesus. It was priests and Pharisees and soldiers. And of course, the pretender himself, that guy, Judas. They had asked Judas, how would they identify this Christ, Jesus? And Judas told them that he would kiss the one who is Jesus. Mm. Then Judas kissed Jesus. Adrian Rogers, anybody remember that name? A great preacher of yesteryear who's, by the way, still preaching on TV and radio. But Adrian Rogers, that great preacher, said that that was a kiss of shame. It was a kiss of infamy. It burned like a hot coal from hell. It was a kiss from hell. Here's what Adrian Rogers said. He said, Judas kissed the door to heaven, and then he went to hell. That guy. That guy. And as I was thinking about that guy, Judas, I, I begin to think there's some lessons that we can learn from that guy. I mean, there's some really good lessons that we can learn from Judas. What are they? Write these things down. I hope you got a listening guy when you came in. There's four things that I want you to jot down. Number one, that guy, Judas, that guy, Judas, teaches us a lesson about salvation. He teaches us a lesson about salvation. I want you to listen really closely to this very first point. Because this is so relevant to the day in which we live. Because we live in a world that's become more churchy and a church that's become more worldly. I mean, we, we live in a day where everybody thinks they're okay. I mean, everybody, yeah, I'm, everybody's kind of religious, you know. Oh, they may not believe in the devil or hell, but they're religious and they think they're okay. And so this is very relevant to the day in which we live. Judas taught us a lesson about salvation. Now, what I'm talking about is the tragedy, watch this, the tragedy of the lost church member. We see it time after time after time. I've traveled all over this country and I've preached the gospel. And all over this country, I've seen people who've been sitting in pews just like we are today, and maybe they've been there for 5, 10, 20, 50 years, yet they realize that they've been playing games with God, that they have been that guy, a pretender, and they've never truly given their heart and life to Christ. It's a tragedy. Now look at the life of Judas for just a moment. I mean, think about Judas. He was one of the 12. Now think about that. I mean, this dude walked with Jesus. Talked with Jesus. Can you imagine being that close to the God of the universe? Could you imagine being that close to God Almighty, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, and yet dying and going to hell? Could you imagine? I mean, this man walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus and lounged with Jesus and ate with Jesus and fellowship with Jesus. He was one of, as a matter of fact, when Judas walked down the street, Little boys, little girls says, hey, mom, there's Judas. He's one of the 12. And yet the Bible says he was of his father, the devil. He was never saved. How can that be? He was one of the 12, but also he was taught by Jesus. You know, today in our world, I was raised in, theologically, I'm a Baptist, and I was raised in the Baptist church, and in our denomination, in the Southern Baptist denomination, you kind of, they, they put a lot of emphasis upon education. Isn't that right, Deborah? They put a lot of emphasis on education. Not all, not all uh, denominations put emphasis on that, but, you know, you need to get your undergrad, your bachelor, your Bible degree. Then you don't need to go get your, your master's degree in theology or church growth or whatever. Then you need to go and get your doctorate, you know, your doctor's degree or your Ph.D. in preaching or whatever. So you can rightly, and there's nothing wrong with education. I mean, I, you know, I've gone through those stages. I, I understand the importance of education. But can you imagine being taught daily by God? Think about that. I mean, every single day, Judas is sitting under the greatest teacher in all the world. 
He's being implanted. The word of God is, is, is going into his ears and, and, and banging on us every single day. He's listening to Jesus. He was taught by God Almighty. And the Bible tells us, number three, that he was a treasurer. Now, who do you get to be your treasurer in your church? Somebody that's honest. Somebody you can trust. Somebody have a good reputation. So here you have Judas. Man, he had all these things going for him. I mean, as he walked down the road, not only did they say, hey, there's Judas, he's one of the 12, but they also said, hey, he's carrying the money bag. The dude has a great reputation. Hey, Mom, there's Judas. Wow. And then I believe that he preached, that he taught. Is it possible? Somebody to preach the gospel, to preach and never be saved? He preached. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, many will do these things and Jesus will say, I never knew you. I don't know about you. That's powerful. That is powerful. Suppose, suppose we had an interview today with that guy, Judas. Suppose we had an interview and we could bring Judas Back to Soul Quest Church and stand him in front of all the people and all the world could see him via website and, and video and all the things, YouTube. And we would ask Judas, Judas, a simple question. Hey, Judas, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Hey, Judas, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? He may say, well, I was a church member. I was a church member. I didn't ask you that, Judas. But, well, I was a preacher. I didn't ask you that. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Well, I was one of the apostles. I didn't ask you that. Are you saved? Well, I'm the treasurer. I count the money. Yeah. I got a good reputation. But are you saved, Judas? Are you saved? Judas had everything going for him. He had the right association, the right education, the right reputation, the right participation. But he did not have regeneration. Did you hear that? He did not have regeneration. And the only thing that can bring regeneration is when a person says, watch this, watch this, when a person says, I can't do this thing on my own. Guys, ma'am, I can't do this thing on my own. I've tried it. I can't do it. And so therefore, I repent of my sins. And God, I put my faith and I put my trust in you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Spirit of God, come and live within me. Then you become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And every time that you walk and you talk and when you do something you ought not do, the Holy Spirit of God convicts you of that thing and you get it right. Friend, if the Holy Spirit of God is not present, if he's not home, you don't know Jesus. Because, the listen, we always say invite Jesus into your heart. Theologically, that's really not accurate. We say invite Jesus. What, what really happens is when you invite Jesus in your heart, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit of God comes and makes residence in your being. And that's what God wants. That's what God desires. And that's what it means to be really born again. And the Bible tells us to examine ourselves to see if we are really in the faith or not in the faith. If we had an interview now, after he's been in hell for these 2,000 plus years, what would Judas say today? i tell you what he would say. You know, we, we're so now, we're kind of moving away from preachers preaching. A lot of people aren't preaching, you know, and that's okay. There's different styles of deliverance and delivering messages. No, that's fine. I'm not, that's fine. That's okay. But I guarantee you that if Judas could stand here today, he wouldn't have a conversation with us. He wouldn't. If Judas was here today, you know what he would do? He would weep and he would cry. He would be broken. He would scream at the top of his lungs, don't do like I did. Give your heart and life to Jesus. Don't play games. Don't be that guy. Don't be a pretender. But give your heart to Jesus. Mm. Lesson number one on salvation. And then that guy, number two, teaches us a lesson about Scripture. 
not only salvation, but Scripture. And all would you, here's a question that I've asked, and I'm sure that you've asked. Why in the world would Jesus pick someone that he knew was going to betray him? I mean, why would Jesus choose a devil to be a disciple? I mean, why would Jesus pick a devil, a pretender, to be an apostle? Well, did Jesus make a mistake? Say no. You're going to help me preach. Did he make a mistake? He didn't make a mistake. Was Judas saved and then he got lost? No. No. Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him. Listen, friend, God doesn't give you a gift and then take that gift away. God is big enough to save you, and God is big enough to keep you. So, that brings us to another important question. Why then would Jesus choose a pretender? Why would he choose a hypocrite? Well, because John 13, write this scripture down, look at it later. I believe it's John 13, verses 18 and 19. There's a prophecy here. It speaks of a betrayal, a proph prophecy of betrayal. And what he's referring to is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 9, where it speaks of the betrayal of a friend. And I believe that he's talking about Judas. You see, Judas was chosen, watch this, so that Scripture could be fulfilled. Now, this is, this is good. Now, I want you to follow me. Friend, I hope everybody in this place knows what I, I, I hope that everybody can leave here today and every Sunday and know what our vision is. If somebody says, what's the vision of Soul Quest Church? I hope and pray that everybody here knows what the vision is. We put it on the screens. We talk about it constantly. We, we hashtag the vision. Can somebody tell me what it is? Whatever it, it takes. Whatever we're going to do as a church, whatever it takes to reach the unchurched, the de-churched, and the lost of Jackson, Madison County, and the world. I mean, that's who we are. That's who God wants us to be. But I want you to understand, as much as we're going to do whatever it takes, and we're going to try some off-the-wall crazy stuff and some things that you may think, now, preacher, you've gone to the edge with that one. But there's one thing that you've got to understand. We may do some different things in our methodology, but the message, watch this, but the message will never, ever, ever be watered down. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. Listen, I want you to hear me. We li listen, we live in a day today where it seems like the message is soft. We, we are, listen, I love worship. I do. I love to come and worship King Jesus. And I love, and I think that we've got the best praise team in America. Yeah. I, I love what Madison and the band are doing. And I love those songs that she's writing. And that we, I love what God's doing. I love to come and worship King Jesus. But I'm afraid we're living in a day today where people seek out music more than they seek out the message. And I want to tell you something, friend. This is God's Word revealed from cover to cover. It's the Word of God. And so when, you, when we ask the question, why in the world, why in the world would Jesus pick a devil? Jesus is saying to us, this is what he's saying. He's saying, my Word is true. My Word is the real deal. My Word is accurate. My Word is infallible. My Word is anointed. This is the Word of God. You see, that guy teaches us a lesson about Scripture. But number three, that guy, Judas, teaches a, us a lesson about service. Now, I believe with all my heart, this is for somebody in the house today. In that same text, same passage, Simon Peter. Don't you love Simon Peter? <laughs> Don't you love that guy? I mean, open mouth, insert foot, right? Always the first one to speak. I'm not going to deny you. I'm, I'm going to be with you. But, 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 you know, after the resurrection, we can look at Simon Peter's life, and Simon Peter's life after the resurrection is a whole lot different than it was before. I mean, this dude's red hot on fire for God. And Simon Peter said in this text, he said, I'm not going to leave you. Even though Judas betrays you, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. 
Judas may be a hypocrite. And here's what's so interesting. The other 11 continue to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, if you are looking for a church that doesn't have a hypocrite in it, good luck. I'm not, I'm not looking at anybody right now, but I guarantee you, listen, every single church in America is going to have that guy. Let me be fair. Or that girl. Right? I mean, all churches are going to have hypocrites. Every church, matter of fact, I'm a, in, in, in a real way, we're all hypocrites. But every church is going to have that guy. And this is very interesting. Judas betrayed Jesus, the hypocrite, the pretender did, but the 11, the other 11 continue to serve God. Some people, and maybe some in this building, will not completely serve Jesus because of some Judas in the church. You may be new here, you left a church or you left a ministry or something because you found out that people are kind of messed up. Guess what? We are too. How many of you are messed up? I mean, you really messed up with two hands. <laughs> right? All right, that's enough. I, I, know, I know we're messed up. But the point is, just because there's a hypocrite in the church, it doesn't mean that we can't serve. Listen, we need to stop looking at the hypocrite and keep our eyes focused on God. Because as long as you look at the hypocrite, Man, it's going to be like, wow, what's the deal? Some money's counterfeit, but you haven't gone out and burnt the rest that you have, have you? Right? You see, the counterfeit validates the real. The counter, that, that's tweet worthy. The counterfeit validates the real thing. Any man that hides behind the hypocrite is smaller than the hypocrite or he couldn't hide behind him. Now, let me just stop and say this. We as Christians, we don't need to be stumbling blocks to those around us, though. So, this is a message for you and I. People are always watching us. They always see us. They always know where we're going and what we're doing, and they know kind of how we act. So, it's a lesson for us as well. Don't just, listen, we don't want to just come to the house of God and lift our hands up and spin around and worship King Jesus and then go out in the world and live like the world. That's not, that's not the Christian life. The Christian life is that, yes, we are all messed up. Everybody say, I'm messed up. We're all messed up, but God doesn't want to keep us. We don't, he doesn't want us to stay in that state. He wants us to grow. Become more like him. So that's a word for all of us as well. But listen, don't allow, listen, I'd rather spend a short time in the church with a hypocrite than to spend an eternity in hell with one. <laughs> mm. Judas, that guy teaches us a lesson about service. Man, I'm telling you, some people are so disillusioned and they, they get so bent out of shape because of a hypocrite in the church. All I'm saying today is this. They're always going to be here. There's always that guy. There's always that girl. There's always that Judas in the church. No matter where you go. Now some churches have more of them than others, maybe. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And I say this all the time. I, I don't, listen, I, I want you to love me. I don't want to let you down. I, I want to live a holy and pure life before God. I, I don't want to let you down. I, I I, I don't, I don't want to let you down, but here's the fact of the matter. I'm going to let you down. I don't want to. I really don't. Because I'm a messed up sinner, saved by grace. I don't do everything I'm supposed to do. I don't want to, but I'm going to let you down. Guess what? Same way with you. It works both ways. But Jesus will never, ever, ever let you down. Lesson number four. This is the record. Shortest sermon ever. That guy teaches us a lesson about salvation, about scripture, about service, but also about that word. 
sin that is not very popular in our day to day. Not very popular. Can I back up and just say this? Because I don't want you to think. Listen, yes, there are hypocrites in the church. But also, also, the greatest people on God's green earth are in the church. Amen? They are. They are. I thank God for children of God who serve God and mean business with God. So don't let some Judas keep you from serving God. Number four, that guy teaches us a lesson about sin. About sin. It may be that some of you today are flirting with sin in your life. I don't know. I heard one time that sin does, you know, that sin will take you further than you want to go. And sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you want to pay. How true that is. You see, in this passage of Scripture, what we discover about Judas is sin, number one, deceived him. Sin deceived him. You know, sin is deceiving, and it's fun for a season, isn't it? I mean, it's fun for a season. But it deceives you. Number two, sin will destroy you. It destroyed him. He hung himself. The Bible says he went out, Judas went out and hung himself. And then sin damned him. He went to his father, the Bible says, the devil. Sin will kill you. Sin will kill you. Now, here's the question. What actually happened to Judas? What happened? Well, watch this now. Watch this close. Because the Bible says in Matthew 27, it says he hung himself. But then the Bible says in the book of Acts that he fell headlong and broke asunder, the King James says. Well, which is it? Is the Bible contradicting itself? No, it's both. I mean, think about this for a moment. He went out and hung himself, and it was there. Now, look, I, 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 don't, want, I don't want to gross you out before lunch. How many are you hungry? I, I don't want to gross you out before lunch, but sin's not a pretty sight. So the, I, the Bible says he went and hung himself, and he was hanging from a tree that, that, that reached out over a cliff. And as he hung himself, his body began to swell over day. Somebody came by, I believe, and cut the rope, and he fell headlong and burst asunder. Sin's no pretty sight. So how did he die? It was a gruesome sight. Sin is not a pretty sight. Jesus said it would have been better for Judas never to have been born. Wow. What a warning of the power of sin. Judas died. The Bible says he died. He was of his father, the devil. You see, we either have a, our father is either God, the father, or, now nobody likes this, but it's the reality, it's the truth. Read the book of Romans, chapter 3. We, we, read John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons, the children of God. Well, if we're not the children of God, you're either the children of God or you're a child of the enemy, right? And so, understand, here we have Judas, and the Bible is warning us of the power of sin, and Jesus, Judas died, that guy died, and he went to this place called hell. This is worthy of you writing down. If you've been born twice, I'm going to go over this really slow. If you've been born twice, you'll only die once. If you're born once, you'll die twice. And if you die twice, you'll wish you'd never been born. Whew, that's heavy. That's heavy. I don't enjoy reading that. But the truth is the truth, isn't it? Think about that with me for a moment. If you've been born twice, you'll die once. What does that mean? Every one of us have been born physically. If you've been born physically, nod your head. If you haven't been born physically, nod your head this way. I knew some of you were really messed up. So every one of us have been born physically, right? But we, listen, but when you do what I mentioned a while ago, God, I can't do this thing called life. I need you. I absolutely have to have you. I repent of my sins. I turn to you. I trust in you. I jump into your arms. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Then you're born a second time. It's called the second birth, or it's called being born again. So if you're born physically, watch this, if you're born physically and you're born 
spiritually, then you only die once, and that is the physical death. Because you live forever with God in heaven. Now that's a great opportunity. That's a great, listen, we ought to get crazy about that. If I was in T.D. Jakes' church, I'm telling you, they'd been throwing wigs everywhere. <laughs> Woo! I mean, lifting their hands and turning, amen? I mean, I wish, I wish I could preach in this church one time. He can say, good morning. Woo! <laughs> amen? Man, I, 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 I love that. All right, so if you've been born twice, you'll only die once. But if you've been born once, you'll die twice. So if you've only been born, watch this, if you've only been born physically, you know, physically, and that's it, then you die, you die physically, and then the Bible says you die forever and ever and ever in eternity. And then the last thing, once again, and if you die twice, you'll wish you'd never been born. Here's the question, and I close. Do you know Jesus? Madison, if you'll come, I want to ask, I want, I want to mention three things as we close. Just play something softly for me. Let, let me speak to three different groups of people, just real quick. Child of God, listen to me, Christian. Christian. Are you letting some pretender, some hypocrite, keep you? For, look at me, look at me. Are you letting some pretender, some hypocrite, that guy... Colba, Judas, are you letting somebody keep you from completely, totally, fully surrendering to God and living for Him? I, I want to promise you something. We, as a, we want to be a, as real and transparent. I've learned through many of years of pastoring, if the pastor's transparent, and just shoots it straight and is real. The people will be real. Some pastors kind of above the people. And everything's hunky door and the tie is perfectly straight and their life is all together. I'm telling you, every one of us struggle. All of us have strongholds or have dealt with strongholds. All of us go through stuff in life. And I, I want us to be the kind of church that when you come, you can just be you. Now, you doesn't want to stay you. I mean, we, we want to we grow and become more like Jesus. But, but we're not the judge. We're not going to, you know, we're here to love you and encourage you and preach the love of God and the grace of God, but the truth of how God wants to change you. But I want you to listen to this. Christian, don't. Don't let the way some other person that claims to be a Christian and they don't live like it. Oh, they may come and holler and holler and carry on and jump up and down and praise God, but during the week they don't live for Jesus. And you know it, you see it. Don't let that guy keep you from serving Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on the King of Kings and the Lord of Number two, if you're here today and you've never, ever trusted Jesus, you, you've not come to this place. I can't do this thing on my own. I turn on my back on my sin and I turn my life to you. Jesus, save me. Don't let some hypocrite keep you from being saved. I, I've seen it time and time again, haven't you? Well, I'm not going to get saved because I know that people, I know them people down there in that church. I mean, he, he, he's drunk every weekend. He's smoking his pot. He's running around. He, you know, he's doing all, and he's going to the church and he's a deacon and he's doing this and he's doing that. I mean, they, they, they're not like, li, they, adultery, having affairs, living with somebody out of the wedlock. I mean, all these things. I'm not going to get saved because there's a hypocrite over here. Folks, there's always going to be hypocrites. Quit worrying. Don't let a hypocrite send you to hell. See, if you don't know Jesus, look at one person. 
person that loves you, that died for you, that never sinned. He knows what you're going through. He knows your pain. He's been there. He wants you to be saved. Number three. Now listen closely. I don't know this, but I wonder if there's a Koba in the house. Hypocrite. Pretender. Playing games. Coming to church. Going through the motions. Serving. Taking chairs down. Welcoming people. Eating all the good donuts. Drinking the coffee. But you know you're deep inside. You're not a child of the living God. Stop playing church like Judah, Ju, Judas did. Stop playing church. And give your heart and life to Jesus. So are you in one of those categories? Christian? Don't let some hypocrite keep you from serving God. Lost person? Don't let some hypocrite keep you from being saved. Hypocrite, stop playing church like Judas did. I don't know where you're at today, but I know one thing. God wants to take you. He wants to take our messed up lives. And he wants to knock all the rough edges off of us. And he wants to make us soldiers in his army. He wants us to be mighty men and women of God who make an impact upon the world that he's placed us in. We are living, listen to this, I believe this with all my heart, we are living in the greatest days for Christianity than there's ever been. <laughs> People are finally realizing this world doesn't give peace. Jesus does. We have the answer. We have the answer. Would you pray with me please? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Thank you.